Don't see no one taking that house yet a while. Nor me. Nancy, hurry, hurry. They're coming along now. I saw the cab down the square. Go on, give it a touch. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. What a beautiful voice he has, isn't he? Those are the melons from number 12. Yes, I thought we might call on them. Not in London, it wouldn't be correct. Oh, but... My dear, I said no. Only two maids. I hear he's a foreigner. But he looks most respectable. Come on, come. Over there with Annabel. Excuse me, sir. The message from the vet about the mayor. He says. All right, sir. I've seen a ghost cub. What here, sir? The ghost of a man out of my past. Oh, you mean when you were in the police force, sir? Most of my ghosts are criminals, but this one wasn't. I know the story of the house he lives in. I was on a case there once when I was a young peeler. Louis Barr! The nephew of old Alice Barr that was murdered 20 years ago. Louis Barr. A foreigner he was and very cut up, I remember. Funny he should come back to 12 Pimlico Square after all these years. 12 Pimlico Square is Mr. Mallon's house, sir. Nonsense! Louis Barr! Right face, right house. No, you were wrong, sir. Impossible. What do you know about it, anyway? Well, it's the parlour maid, sir, you see. She's a friend of mine. The family's name is Mallon. They live at number 12? Yes, sir. At least ways part of it. Nancy says they don't use the top two stories. Bit queer, Nancy says. Means less dusting for her, though. Mrs. Mallon's queer, too. Queer, is she? Hmm. In what way? Well, she's sort of odd in her mind. She 
does strange things. Nancy says Mr. Mallon gets very upset. He goes out every night. It's a very queer place. Yes, it does sound queer. I want you to see as much of her as you can. What, the mayor, sir? No, 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 you're Nancy. Oh, she's not mine, sir. I'm only one of the pebbles on the beach, so to speak. Well, you play up to her. I want to know everything that goes on. I believe I'm going to be very interested in number 12. A dirty evening for a stroll, sir. There's a lot of dirty things in London. doing? Nothing, Paul. Don't wake up. What are you doing, Bella? Thought I heard the muffin man. Then why didn't you ring for Nancy to find out? Thought it would mean two journeys. For ring her. for Nancy, Bella. What do you suppose the servants are for? To serve us, I suppose, dear. Nancy, I rang the muffin man. Oh, I thought you rang for tea, Mama. I was just bringing it up. Oh, then it's too late for muffins. <laughs> not at all, my dear, not at all. Nancy, spread the cloth, lay the tea things, go down and get the muffins, cook the muffins, and bring up the muffins. You see, my dear, it's all quite simple. Light the gas, Nancy. Yes, sir. You're looking very impudent and pretty tonight, Nancy. More broken hearts. I don't know, I'm sure, sir. Where do you get the colour for your cheeks, Nancy? Could you not give the recipe to Mrs. Mallon? Oh, no, sir. I'm natural. <laughs> Will that be all you're wanting, sir? Yes, Nancy, that'll do for the present. So I'd do anything to my face or ask for her assistance if I did. Well, Bella was only trifling with her. So humiliating for me. That girl laughs at me enough as it is. Oh, nonsense, Bella. You know perfectly well how you imagine things. Don't say that. I have been better the last two weeks, haven't I? What do you mean? You know very well what I mean, but I've been trying so hard. And I have been better because you've been kind to me. Perfectly all right, if only you'll be patient and gentle with me. Of course, my dear, of course. Shall I stay in this evening? Would you? Mm -hmm. What shall we do? Tea first. And then I'll pay for you. We'll have an evening just like we used to. just noticed something. If you put it right while I'm not looking, I will say no more about it. What's the matter? I don't understand. <sighs> Paul, don't turn your back on me. Look on the wall behind you. Picture, it's gone again. Yes. Where have you hidden it this time? Didn't take it. Why should I take it? It's no use to me. Why should you take other things? Pencils, knives. Hold on. Bella, 
Where's the picture? I didn't take it, I swear I didn't. Come, get the picture. I'd know if I touched it, I'd remember. I've been better lately. You've missed nothing for, for days, for two weeks I've been well. I've had no headaches, no dreams. Why should I take the... So you did know where it was. And I promise you I didn't. I only supposed it was here because it was found here twice before. Why do you persist in lying to me, Bella? It's the truth. Bella, if you're not lying, there's only one alternative. You're losing your wits. You promised you'd never say that to me again. No control, even of your hands. You'd better go to your room. No, no, not my room. I can... I can't bear to be alone. Oh, God help me. God help you indeed. I'm going to appeal to you, Paul. Please, please don't be angry with me. I've never lied knowingly to you. If I took the picture or your ring or your pencil, I, I didn't know. You must bear with me, Paul. Hmm. I don't know how much longer I can keep my patience. Eavesdropping, Nancy? No, sir. I didn't hear anything, honey. I was just carrying the muffins Your and I... mistress is a very unusual woman. Quite strange, you know. You mustn't let things you hear and see in this house upset you. You're a young girl. Inexperienced. You are inexperienced, aren't you? Depends how you mean, sir.
doesn't like it. Isn't it a lovely day, Paul? Just look at the sunshine out in the square. Mm-hmm. Where's my letter? What letter? I haven't had one for such a long time. I do hope it's from Cousin Vincent. It isn't here. Why should there be a letter for you? Nancy told me there was one. Oh, Bella. Oh, she did, she did, Paul. But you've been through them yourself, dear. You see, they're all addressed to me. Oh, I had so hoped. There must be a letter, Paul. Nine o'clock. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Miss... The dog, Bella. I'm sorry, Tilly. Won't be for long. I will read from the 127th Psalm. Except the Lord built the house, the labor is not lost that build it. When they speak with their enemies in the gate. Let us pray. Pimlico Square I was after. Oh, number 14's the only empty house in the square, I'm afraid. We are the sole agents. <coughs> My pipe worrying you? Oh, not at all. <coughs> Faces south, a little alley runs along the back, nothing to block out the light. But we'll have some difficulty, I'm afraid, Mr. Ruff. Why is that? The remainder of the lease of number 14 is in the hands of Mr. Mallon of number 12. And he's already refused three good offers. Mr. Mellon of number 12? Why won't he let? Do you know, I've often wondered. A queer profession, mine, Mr. Ruff. So near to so many people's lives, and yet always on the doorstep, as it were. Yes, yes, indeed. A fascinating study, human nature, Mr. Ruff. Fascinating. You don't think there's much chance of that house being really in the market? Well, if you want to make an offer, do so by all means. I sometimes wonder if it's the noise he's afraid of. The wife's a delicate woman, just had a breakdown, I understand. A charming creature. I've seen her often walking in the gardens of the square with her dog. Gardens? Oh, sounds very pleasant. Oh, they're charming, though. Savages. I hope you're not hurt, Mum. No, not a bit. Oh, you come and sit down over here. Oh, no, I'm all right. Too. Oh, you can't possibly tell if you're hurt until you've had time to think it over. It doesn't matter so much when you've soft bones like those little <laughs> rascals. I have a good mind to go and complain to the nurses. Oh, it wasn't their fault. It was quite a... Oh, thank you. That is kind of you. Fond of children, I see. Got any of your own? No. I must go. Well, you haven't counted all your bones yet. <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. I'm old enough to be a father. They're not what they used to be. Who aren't? Children. Oh. I should be ashamed if I couldn't bowl a better hoop than that, wouldn't you? I never bothered about hoops. I was brought up in the country. Uh, so was I. Whereabouts? Devonshire. Devonshire? What part? I lived with some cousins near Exmouth. Well, I know Exmouth very well. I wonder if I've met them. Their name was Alswater. Well, don't go yet. I was just getting interested. Stop it, you rude oh. little boys. It's just great. Oh, how dim. Hmm. Poor little dimples. I'd like to give them a taste of Devonshire. Yes, a grass bank to roll down some nice clean mud. Well, thank you for being so kind. Toy shop. I beg your pardon. Something for those little objects to play with. There is a toy shop across the road. Oh, what a lovely idea. They do look so miserable. Well, you'll have to come along too, of course. I mean, that's oh. the whole idea. 
Must have a woman about where brats are concerned, you know. <laughs> I mean, they'd run a mile if I were to so much as call to them to come. I'd love to see them enjoy themselves, but... Well, what's the stuff? Well, my husband is out and he won't be back till tea time. Then you'll be back in time to have it with him. I don't want to be silly, but I don't know you. Oh, this is charity, ma'am. That blows convention out of the window. Hey! There's I mean you children out there in the street. Come along, don't be afraid. I've got something for you. some toys to play with. It is such a shame you can't go into the square. This gentleman thought that... Well, there's a toy shop over there. Tops, if you like, or hoops. Do let's go across, shall we? Oh, we've come to the wrong shop. Buns and ice cream are what they want. Do you think we should? Nonsense. Make them all sick. Do them a world of good. Well, you know what you want, don't you? Come on in. Here we are. Help yourselves. Blimey, look at them lovely tarts. Plenty more. Anything you like, in reason. That's right. Then. And what exactly can we do for you? Knock his block off. You, who cannot control yourself in your own home, to risk such a thing with a complete stranger. Who's the children, Paul? A horde of noisy street urchins. When you know the only hope for you is rest and quiet. Put the dog down. You're not listening to me. I am listening. What are you going to do? I told you before, I can't stand the dog in the drawing room. I'm very fond of her, Paul. It's not natural. Fuss you make over it. Sometimes I wonder if you even want to be like other people. Why did you ever marry me, Paul? When I married you, Bella, you were a normal woman. So I thought. It's only since we came to this house that I, I've changed. I never wanted to come here. Yet it was my money that made it possible for you to buy it. Is that why you married me, Paul? You have changed, Bella. And what's made me change? What's made you change, Paul? Because you have in the way you treat me. I believe it's ever since that day when I... I found that old envelope addressed to Louis Bauer. That was the first time that you were angry with me like this. But I told you I had forgotten that incident. My only anxiety has always been to get you well. I must get away from here. I'll never be well till I get away from this house just for a little. Come outside, Judy. Come along. Paul, I could. My cousins, the Ellswaters. It would be lovely to smell Devonshire again. Your cousin, Mr. Vincent Ellswater, at the affrontery to oppose our marriage. Oh, but that's over and done with. Vincent won't mind now. But I mind. I have no desire to reopen our acquaintance. Besides, I don't care to drag strangers into our trouble. They're not strangers. They're my own people. They're all I have. I, I want to see them. I, I will see them. If you see anyone, it will be a doctor. No. No, not a doctor, Paul. I'm... I'm... well, I'm better. Please leave me alone, Paul. But I don't see how I can take the responsibility for you any longer. Don't cry. You'll spoil your looks. 
And I wanted you to look very beautiful tonight. Oh. Have you any objections to being seen out with your husband? Why are you going to take me out? There's a charity concert tonight at Winterbourne House. I could get tickets and no Lady Winterbourne. Concert and you take me? I shouldn't enjoy it, my dear, provided... Oh, how wonderful it's Provided that you promise to control yourself. To behave as you know I'd wish my wife to behave. I promise. What shall I wear? Whatever you look prettiest in, my dear. There are. Wear the cameo brooch I gave you when we got engaged. I will. <laughs> Please, Nancy. The big cameo. Yes, ma'am. It's not here, ma'am. Oh, it must be. Look underneath. Oh, of course it's here. Let me look. Perhaps I left it in another dress. Nancy, my cloak. Which one, Mum? Well, which one do you think? Couldn't say, I'm sure, Mum. Oh. This will do. What a very lovely purse. But not my brooch. I would have worn it. You know how fond I am of it, only it uh, didn't go with this dress. Well, I wouldn't presume to criticize your taste, but your hair is it quite right. Come, I hold that. It's a quarter to eight, Bella. I think I'm making it worse. My hand's quite shaky with excitement. Ah, there's the cat. I think I'm going to enjoy myself tonight. John and Mr. Holmes. Mr. and Mrs. Blair. Prince Hanawa and Mr. Wright. Mr. and Mrs. Mellon. How do you do? How do you do? May I introduce my wife? How do you do? How do you do? A very good cause, isn't Lady it? Lady Frinton, Miss Frinton. Splendid cause, definitely. Mr. Rawling, Miss Rawling. Charming, quite a complexion. You're the most beautiful of all. I hope the stool is right. Thank you.
Francesca. Must have forgotten it. Don't worry about it now. I don't know anything about it, Paul. It was my pocket when we left the house. Paul, don't look at me like that. I do apologize. My wife, an attack. Let me send for a doctor. Oh, thank you. It's nothing unusual, unfortunately. Come along, darling. Come along. silent, I can't stand it. Hit me, hurt me, do anything, but pity's sake, speak to me. How can you torture me like this? And have you not tortured me? You make my life a misery at home, and now you shame me in public. At least let's keep your stealing and pickpocketing and lying to ourselves. I haven't lied to you. I didn't take your watch. What about the brooch? The brooch? The one I asked you to wear tonight. The one that didn't go with your dress. It's upstairs in my room. More lies. It is. It must be. It's only mislaid, Paul. You've hidden it away in one of your mad dreams. I have not. If it's gone, someone else has taken it. Someone else? We see about someone else. Elizabeth, Nancy, come up to the drawing room. At once, please. Paul, please don't question the servants in front of me. Oh, dear, dear, what happened now? Mistress been playing him up again, I suppose. There you are, Tilly. Go into your basket. There you are. Stop titivating yourself. Come on. Paul, please don't have that girl up here. At least let me look again first. fallen behind the dressing table. Let's talk this over between ourselves. Please, please don't let the servants know. Come in. Shut the door, please, Elizabeth. Come into the room. You know the cameo brooch your mistress often wears? Yes, sir. Are you, Nancy? Yes, sir. It is missing. Do you know anything about it? I want you to think carefully before you answer, Elizabeth. No. 
No, sir, I don't. You will please kiss the Bible and talk of your truthfulness. Thank you. And you, Nancy, have you ever touched the brooch? No, sir, of course I haven't. Thank you. You may go. Be careful what you do. Don't commit sacrilege as well. Oh, this is no sacrilege. I swear by Almighty God that I neither took your watch nor hid away the brooch. Then you are mad, you unhappy creature. And you'll get worse until you die. Raving in an asylum! Where the devil are you going, Nancy? I came to see if there were any letters to the post, sir. Are you expecting to meet somebody on your way to the post? Only a gentleman friend, sir. So I suppose. Well, are there any letters, sir? Come in for a moment, will you? Let me have a look at your hair. Very good, sir. Is there anything more you want, sir? Perhaps. Come closer, will you? Is there anything you want, sir? There. Can she do that for you? I believe you're jealous of your mistress, Nancy. Huh? She's a poor thing. That's better than one of us to get eggs, ain't it? Yes, Nancy, I believe it is. You're mine now, aren't you? Because you want me. And do you want me? I've always wanted you. When shall we meet? I'll let you know. Not tonight. No, I have to go out again. Go along now, there's a good girl. Very well. You shall be master for a bit longer. Good night, your lordship. That you come? Yes, sir. All quiet. Well, the constable passed about ten minutes ago, sir. Yes, I reckon they can't get back from that concert before eleven. That'll give me time to find out what he gets up to in number fourteen. The only thing is, sir, I usually meet Nancy when she comes out at nine o'clock to post the letters. Well, she never came. Well, we'll have to risk it. If Nancy does come out, squeeze her dry. Of information, I mean. Good evening, Nancy. You're late. Hello. Nice of you to wait. Such goings on. Master made us swear things, kissing the Bible and all. 
Master, but I thought they were at the concert. Oh, they came back early. Must have had another hour. Come on, I'm going to take the letters. Well, look, let, let me take them for you. It'll save you the trouble. Oh, I like a bit of air. And a change. Someone moving. Elizabeth! Oh, dear, is there no one? It's all right, ma'am. I'm coming. Oh, Elizabeth, there is someone upstairs. Someone moving. There, there, ma'am. Don't take on so. There isn't anybody in the house, only you and me. You mustn't let yourself imagine things. Come into your room and drink your milk. But I don't imagine things, Elizabeth. It's true, you can hear it. A moment ago, the was and the gas dimmed, as it does when someone turns on another light in the house. Did you turn on another light, Elizabeth? No, ma'am. There's no one in the house but us. Nancy's out and the master. You did a minute ago. There, there, ma'am. There's only something wrong with the pipes. You must have dropped off and been dreaming you heard something. That's right, Elizabeth. Dreaming. But I dream things when I'm awake. I'm going out of my mind, Elizabeth. Oh, ma'am. You mustn't say such things. Did you know, Elizabeth? Well, the master did say something, but... Uh... I once knew a girl who died in a lunatic asylum. I remember her eyes. That was how they first knew. If there's anything I can do, ma'am. No, thank you, Elizabeth. There isn't anything anybody can do.
cash count. There's a letter from Australia, sir. Australia? Give it to me. Cobb, I really am a remarkable man. Yes, sir. It's my memory. Amazing. They shall have it for the museum when I die. With any luck, this should help us. When's Nancy's next night out? Well, tonight, sir. Yes, I wish it was Mrs. Mellon's instead. Still, it all goes to show that I'm on the right lines, as usual. All I want now is evidence. Evidence of what, sir? Well, I'm certain that he's Louis Bauer. And I've a shrewd idea of what he's up to in that house. Can't prove it, of course. The only one who can help us is that poor woman. And she's crazy. Uh, she will be if she stays there much longer. Does she know that he's not Mallon? Don't think so. But she knows something. That's her danger. That's why we've got to get her away from him. Out of that house. <laughs> That's easier said than done, sir. Call. What is it? A gentleman to see the governor. It's a stranger, sir. Shall I Thank him? God you're here, sir. Come along in. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know he was a friend. Never of seen him in my life before. You, Mr. Brown. That's right. Well, I got your letter. I'm Mr. Vincent Ellswater from Devonshire. Yes. Come along and sit down, sir. I've got a lot to talk to you about. Your boots, sir. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Mann is in her room? Yes, sir. I think she's got an headache, sir. Did you ever know a time when Mrs. Mann did not have a headache, Nancy? <laughs> Hardly ever, sir. And when is your next evening out, Nancy? Tonight, sir. And where do you usually pass the evenings with your gentleman friends, Nancy? Oh, walking around the square, sir. Or in the park. And perhaps it would be departing too much from tradition if you were to come with me to a music hall. Oh, do you mean it? I always mean what I say. I shall meet you at 7.50 at the corner of the square. You're a rum I thought you was never going to do nothing. It'll do, Nancy. Answer the bell. Is Mrs. Mallon at home? What name should I say, sir? Her cousin, Mr. Owlswater. Very good, sir. How do you do? How do you do? Will you come in here for a moment? that Mrs. Mellon is not informed of this call. If he could, sir. I hope you'll forgive me for calling at this hour, but I happen to be in London and I'd hope to see Bella. I'm sorry, but my wife is unable to see you. Mr. Mellon, this is a little difficult to explain, but you may remember that at the time of your marriage, there was a slight friction between us. Mm. I was peculiarly alive to the fact my sister and I have long regretted these differences. They've kept us separated from Bella too long. In your opinion? We're anxious to see her again. Have her stay with us in Devonshire. The air always used to do her so much good down there. You're under the impression she's ill? Well, uh, And what has given you that impression? She was never strong. I'm the best guardian of my wife's health. All the same, I should like to see my cousin. Bella was with me when we heard you arrive. If she had wished to see you, she wouldn't have asked me to speak to you down here. She refused to see me. The inference appears to me perfectly clear. I don't think I like your tone, Mellon. You're under no obligation to listen to it, Mr. Alswater. I'm not going to leave this house until I've seen my cousin. You propose to interfere between a husband and wife? It would require physical force, Mr. Alsporter. Nancy, will you please show this gentleman out? Yes, sir. Paul, 
I've just seen Vincent out in the square. Has he been here? Yes, he's been here. Would you let him go without seeing me? Paul, why didn't you tell me? So you did write to him? Right. Against my express orders, you went behind my back and complained to your cousins. But I didn't. I've never written to them. How did he know this address? I don't know. Or that you'd been ill? I don't know. What else did you tell him? Nothing. I never wrote. What lies about me have you told him? Paul, if I had written, which I didn't, do you suppose I'd have said a word to my cousins against my husband? Do you think I can trust the insane ravings of a mad woman? Paul, don't say that. Your mind is diseased. You are as witless as an animal. Paul. I'm desperate. If I do the things you say, then I am going mad. It's when you're angry with me like this. My head aches and my mind gets tired. You must help me, Paul. If you were afflicted, I would be gentle. I should love you more. Let go of my arm. Paul, how can you be so cruel? You used not to be. It's only since we came to this hateful, horrible house that everything's changed. It must be because of that envelope I found. Who was Louis Bauer? There's no such person as Louis Bauer. And why should that have changed our lives? Just a name on an old envelope. There was never even an envelope! That was the beginning of your madness. Then I realized you were a half-witted creature who pried through my desk and my papers. But this is the end. You're not only mad, you are dangerous. You're going to see a doctor, madam. No, Paul. Not a doctor. More than one doctor tomorrow morning. Oh, I'm too tired. Paul, have you ever loved me? I hate you. You are utterly repulsive to me. I can't understand. Is my cousin not wanting to see her? You've only got his word for it. Well, she's his wife. I couldn't force him to let me see her. But surely there must be something we can do to help her. There's nothing you can do now. It won't do to let him get really afraid of your interference. This cab of mine will take you back to your hotel. Oh, it's very kind of you. But I hate leaving you to deal with all this. After all, I am her cousin. Well, I can perhaps use methods that you can't. I may need your influence to get a warrant if I can't get my evidence. Good. But he won't risk anything that'll lead to an inquiry afterwards. And in the meantime, you know where to find me. Anderton's Hotel. Jim, Anderton's Hotel. Right. Come on. Mr. Ruff. Mr. Ruff, sir. Well, what's the trouble? It's Mrs. Mullins, sir. What's happened? He's going to have her certified in the morning. How do you know? Well, Nancy heard. I was going well, out of it tonight. Come to the point, boy. Well, I waited and I saw Nancy and Mr. Mullins get into a cab. Where have they gone to? Well, I heard him tell the driver to go to Canterbury Music Hall. This is our chance. Well, where are we going? Save your breath. You'll need it later on. For one long year and two long months, three weeks, four days, five hours, alas, I went to court in one of nature's fairest flowers. Miss Serafina Honeyman, who caused a deep sensation in the region of my heart. But now I'm full of anger. For it's very aggravating when your love's not true. Enjoy yourself. Ah, oh, say so, aren't you? Immensely. That's going to be one long holiday for you after tomorrow. Mm-hmm, bachelor. Oh, Elizabeth, it's you. Help me to move this. My brooch may have dropped behind. If only I can find it. 
find my brooch. He may not send for the doctors. The gentleman to see you, ma'am. Oh, well, tell him my husband isn't in. It's you he wants to see, ma'am, not the master. And he says it's urgent. Vincent, he's come back. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Good evening, Mrs. Mellon. You? But I thought Last it... Last time we met, your husband interrupted us. But he won't this time. I don't understand. Ah, uh, you will indeed, ma'am. Very shortly. Now, you just sit down. Make yourself comfortable. <sighs> You're supposed to be going off your head, aren't you? Who told you? Why do you say that? Ladies and gentlemen, the Canton dancer. <laughs> Direct from Paris, and I know you're going to like them. <laughs> of course, as I know more about what they're going to do than you do at the present, I hope you'll excuse my back. <laughs> was ransacked, the murderers searched for those rubies all through the night. And the opinion of the police was that he found them and vanished with them. And they never caught him? No. But suppose he didn't find those rubies after all. Suppose they were concealed in the walls or the floor of old Ellis Barlow's bedroom. Which was the room above yours, Mrs. Mellon? The footsteps. What footsteps? And the gaslight going up and down. The boy I love is up in the gallery. The boy I love is looking down at me. There he is, can't you see? Waving his handkerchief as merry as a robin that sings on the tree. The boy. Starting. I've had enough. Come along now. Please. That's what's made me sure my mind is going. Lying in my room, watching the gaslight, listening for someone in a place where no one can go. Oh, yes, they can. Along the roof from the empty house next door. But what are you saying? It fits. It all fits. Tell me, have you ever heard the name Louis Bauer? It's a trap. I never said I found that envelope. No, no. It's a lie. No. Go away. Leave this house. No, I don't no, know. Come, I come. Know you're it. Come. I don't. What do you know about Louis Bauer? Oh, I found, I, I thought I found an envelope addressed to him. It was when we first came here. That's what started my... I've got it. I've solved it. I've saved you. God, what a marvellous man I am. What are you talking about? Your Mr. Mellon is my Mr. Louis Bauer, a criminal maniac who murdered his aunt and steals back to his own house at night, still searching for those rubies he couldn't find 20 years ago. And every time he lights the gas up in that room, so it dims down here. And when the light brightens, uh, I hear his key in the door a few minutes afterwards. I can't stand it, my mind. Oh, you're not going out of your mind, Mrs. Mellon. You're slowly and methodically being driven out of your mind. Why? Because quite by accident you got into his identity, and that made you dangerous to him. He couldn't get rid of you by ordinary means, for fear of an inquiry. So he's driving you mad in order to discredit anything that you say as the ravings of a lunatic. Thank God you're not married to him. Not married to him? 
Certainly not. He married another lady long before he met you, and she's still alive. How do you know? I've been finding out things about Mr. Louis Power. Where is this woman? Oh, that's the trouble. Australia. That's three months away. By then it'll be too late to save you. That's why you've got to give me the evidence we need. What evidence? Any proof of Louis Bauer's identity. But I don't know where to find it. Well, you can tell me where to look. Yes, but... In here? You don't understand. To me, he's still my husband. I couldn't betray my husband. You mean the man who betrayed you into thinking you were married to him? Well, that's different. That was before I knew him. We've... We've lived together as husband and wife. If I betrayed him, I'd be betraying myself. Even though I tell you that this moment, he's sitting in a music hall with another woman, your parlor maid. Is that true? It's hard to take everything from you, but I'm afraid it is. You go straight in and I'll follow you in a moment. What are you going to do? Oh, take a little stroll. Well, we go out again. I'll let you know. I know you will. He keeps his papers in there. Ah, then this is where we start. But it's locked. Good. That means there are probably some things inside that are very interesting. Do you mind if I take my coat off? I always work much better with my coat off. Saucy shirt, isn't it? What are you going to do? There's only two things I've ever wanted to be. A gardener or a burglar. Both of them nice, quiet occupations. This is tougher than I thought. You mustn't force it. I'm afraid I'll have to. But what shall I say when he comes back? Don't you realize it's tonight or never? Tomorrow he wants to get you certified. If we go back, we're lost. We must gamble on finding something. Now, are you with me? All right, force it, but be quick. Oh, there's no hurry, ma'am. He's quite happy where he is. I don't like these violent methods. It makes me feel like a dentist. All over now. Hmm. Drawn a blank so far. Give me the keys. I suppose he keeps his papers in here. Uh. <laughs> Look! His back is upstairs. Oh, I'm afraid. How long does he usually stay? Any time, an hour, ten minutes. Well, we shall want longer than that. <laughs> Done for, I'm afraid. But well, we shall have to risk it. Come along. Come along. Oh, I can't see him, I don't. You shan't. Go right up to your room, lock yourself in, and don't come out in any circumstances until I tell you. You're not going. You won't leave the house. Of course not. But Elizabeth. Oh, don't you worry about Elizabeth. I've squared her. Now remember, you're all right so long as you stay in your room. Bella. I brought you milk. Go upstairs and tell Mrs. Madden she's to come down here at once. Just like that, sir. Very good, sir. Are you there? 
Damon. Master says you to come to the drawing room at once. She won't answer. She's got the door locked. I tried it. All right, Nancy, go to bed. Um, well, I've, I've got to let the dog out first. You needn't worry about the dog. Go to bed. What's the game? What are you up to, eh? Will you kindly remember that you're not a guest in this house? Oh, right, right. Your dog here. I found it in the drawing room, but you know it is not allowed. Dog, Paul, no! No! Don't hurt it! I'm coming! I'm coming! Give me the dog! What have you done with it? Dog? What dog? You said you had it. Have you hurt it? I haven't seen your dog. None of your dreams, like the one in which you dared break open my desk. Dream. Don't tell me it was a dream that he never came here. He? Who came? Tell me about this dream of yours. I dreamed that a man came. And here. I dreamed. I know you dreamed. But tell me about the man. Speak, will you? I want to know more about the man. A dream. A dream. Was I part of this curious dream? Who are you? Apparently a mere figment of this lady's imagination. How did you get in? Well, we ghosts don't have to bother about doors. If you don't tell me your business... I came I'll... to call upon another ghost. The ghost of the man who murdered Alice Barlow in this very room. I have no idea what you're talking about. Haven't you, Mr. Louis Bauer? My name is Mellon. Oh, no, it isn't. You've been listening to my wife's insane ramblings. Correct. Except that she isn't insane, nor is she your wife. You dare to break into my house? You tamper with my desk? Where you and I know lies the evidence that you are Louis Bauer. <laughs> Here's what you want. It'll give me great pleasure to see you make a fool of yourself before I throw you out of the house. Hmm. Seems to be nothing here. My brooch. And it's true. You did hide my things. You laid traps for me and said that I lied to you. I found the brooch on it today and put it aside until I could give it back to you. Give it to me. This isn't your brooch. I gave it to my wife as an engagement present. Where do you get it from? It's second hand. How do you know? There's an inscription in it. Where? Where? Inside. It's a trick. I discovered it by accident. Show me. To A, B. What are these? There were some sort of stones in it. Stones? Well, where are they? Quick. They were loose, so I took them out and put them in here. There you are. Alice Barlow's brooch. Alice Barlow's rubies. 20,000 pounds worth. This brooch and these rubies are going to send you to the gallows. Give them to me. Get out of the room quickly.
That'll hold him. We shan't need any more. Did you get my message through to Mr. Ellswater? Yes, sir. All right, well, you go for the police now and hurry. Well, very good, sir. It's all over now, ma'am. You can go along up to your room. I'll deal with the servants. I want to speak to my wife alone. You go up to your room. I, too, want to speak to my husband. No, you'll only be torturing yourself. I want to speak to him alone. Very well, if you insist. I don't suppose. Uh, I'll hear you if you call. Bella, quick, Bella, the rubies. Help me to get away and give me them. Rubies? How you lusted for them. Look at Look. Bella, hurry. Get the knife down the drawer. Cut me free and give them to me. Quick, Bella. Cut the rope here. Take the knife. Knife? What knife? Are you suggesting this is a knife I have in my hand? Have you gone mad, my sane husband? There was a knife, but I lost it. I always hide things away because I'm mad. Bella, what are you saying? Ruby, you killed a woman for them. And me, you tried to kill my mind. You made me mad. Witless as an animal, you said. And now you're helpless, and I'm mad. Bella! Let him hold them. 